What's up, y'all? In this video, we're gonna talk about what logarithms are. Now, this is a modified version of an, of an activity that I go through with my classes, and in the interest of maintaining a good policy or good procedure, I do wanna make note that this was found originally from the website of the math teacher, Sarah Van Der Werf. I'll link her website in the description below. And she actually found it from another great math teacher named Kate Nowak, uh, but her website doesn't seem to be active. So I will at least get us back to Sarah Vanderwerf uh, if you are interested in going through the full logarithm activity. Let's get to it. Now, before we get into a logarithm, let's take a look at two or three things here and just read through what this is and see if we can kind of decipher what we're trying to find. If I say power two, eight equals three, what connections do you have? What things pop into your head? And this is again, what I ask my students in class. Um, if you need to pause for a second and go through these three to see if you can come up with it, I'll give you a second to do that now. If we start with this first one, it says power two, eight equals three. The connection that I'm seeing when I look at this is I look at this and I say, ah, wait a minute, two, three, eight. So this looks like two to the third power equals eight. That's kind of what I'm seeing. That's some of the relationships of these numbers that I see. And over here, as I'm looking at this, I'm seeing five squared is 25 and of course if we continue to follow this pattern for this last one three to the fourth power is 81. so that's some of the connections that i'm seeing between these numbers written here and kind of what i'm recognizing as some patterns but what happens if we take this term power and we change it to logarithm all right well then we've got logarithm 2 16 equals something well, if I'm looking at this, logarithm two, this was my power over here. So if I'm getting 16 and I wanna, and I'm thinking two to some power is 16, then, okay, so two to the, what's that? Two to two is four times two is eight times two is 16. So two to the fourth power is going to be 16. Or here, if I'm again, kind of following the same pattern that we have up above, logarithm six, of 36. So logarithm six of 36. So six to what power is gonna give me 36 and that's gonna be two. Okay, this one gets a little bit trickier. All right, so logarithm 10 of one over 100. Now this one you're gonna to have to have some knowledge of your rules of exponents to be able to get into this one. But this gives us, uh, let's see, 10, that would have to be 100, so that would be squared. But to make it a fraction, that would have to be a negative two. So if you're not familiar with that, you're gonna to wanna to go back and check out our rules of exponents video linked in the description below. So 10 to the negative two power is one over 100. Okay, but that's not actually how we write it when we do logarithms. We actually write it like this. With these logarithms, now uh, this is typically how we write it. We typically, we typically write log, this is the base. So if you, again, go back to your exponent videos, we always call this the base. This up here was the power or the exponent. And this uh, is what I kind of call the result or maybe the answer. Well, and what we found here is that if we had this, this ended up being our base, right? Here's our base. Our exponent was over here. So here was our exponent. This was our base and this ended up being our result. So again, just kind of following the same pattern of what we saw up here and breaking it down down here. So if we're looking at log seven of something equals two, here this has ended up being our base. So log base seven, this was our exponent, base seven of something equals two. Well, I know this is gonna be the power of seven, so that's gotta be 49. Similarly, oh wait, not so similarly. This one, we're missing the base now. So some base squared gives me 81. So now I have to know what the base is. So I have to do a little bit of my mental math to get there. What number squared gets me 81? Ah, yeah, okay, that's gonna be 
nine. So I can't really fit nine in. I'll try and squeeze a nine in there, but that's, that's a nine. And then finally, we're missing the base again. Something to the third power is equal to 64. So let's see, eight squared is 64, but that's squared. So I need to go down smaller than that. Uh, six squared is 36, so I put another six on there. That's not gonna work. So uh, that's gonna be too big. Um, so four, four times four is 16. 16 times four is 64. So here our base is going to be four. Let's see, let's make that just a little bit clearer. That's a nine and this is a four. I probably shouldn't have put that box in there, but hey, what do you know? Uh, so this is what a logarithm is. For all intents and purposes, a logarithm is the inverse of an exponential function or equation. And what a logarithm does is it finds us the exponent. That's the big thing that we need to know, is that a logarithm finds us the exponent of some function, of some power, or not of some power, of some base. So all of these things, as we look at all these, here is the base, the, here is the result of doing this base to some power, this is our result, this ends up being the exponent. So what a logarithm does is it unwraps that exponential. So uh, you know, some, a number to some power equals this. What is that power that I need to find? Ah, I'm gonna take a logarithm of this. So it's kind of, you know, one way to think of it is, is I like to say like, you know, the logarithm to the, the exponent is kind of like the division to your multiplication or your subtraction to your addition, right? The square root to a square. Um, but this is if you've got an unknown value in your exponent, not, not just a squared, but like some unknown value, your variable is in your exponent or something like that. And you want to get to what is that number? One way to do it is to take a logarithm. So I hope that was helpful. If it was, make sure you give me a thumbs up and we'll go through some further examples and the, all the rules that go with logarithms in our next video. I'll see you there.